Welcome to Reviews from the Beer Camera. I'm Chris Neville. And I'm Chris May. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. What do you think of the new theme? <laughs> it's awesome, dude. Finally, we won't get sued by Steely Dan. Finally, Steely Dan can get off our backs. Pagan's on the phone constantly. It's really a, it's a bummer. So, um, But anyway, uh, we're here uh, still in quarantine. But uh, the Film League has moved forward. We're, we've been viewing movies at a pretty impressive clip, faster than we were doing when we were in quarantine. Yeah, we, we, right. I mean, we're just all at home. So we figured out the Netflix party. We could all watch it together. And uh, we've done a couple of those and one on the horizon. So yeah, we're the Film League uh, just carries on. Yes, we persevere. We persevere. And uh, and uh, so Chris Waters uh, picked the movie this time around. So uh, he will also be appearing in our Chris Picks segment later today. Um, but uh, you know, I thought he picked a good one, and uh, we'll get we'll get to that in a little while. But uh, what are we going to talk about? We got movie news. Uh, there's not a lot of news. I mean. Sonic the Hedgehog remains at the top of the box office for the for the for now and forever possibly. I hope uh, not forever. That may be the la- that may be the last top box office movie of all time. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What's in the news with movies? There's been a couple little things here and there. Well, we uh, we have no uh, recent news about uh, Harvey Weinstein. Um, I think he is uh, still. Um, uh, quarantining in prison, and uh, but we have had no uh, specific news about Harvey. So, as always, uh, we don't care. Screw him. No, we don't care. He's probably just spending his time thinking about some of the movies he's well known to have made over the years. Yes, I think that that uh, he's probably sitting back thinking about um, Piranha Three Double D. Probably Nut Job Two. It's got to be the one that job too. I mean, that was just such a good one. And what, Scary Movie 5? Scary think? Movie 5, I think that's correct, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's 5 probably, was the best one in the series. It really was. 3 was good, but <laughs> I think he's probably thinking about those movies. As everybody is, as everybody. Um, we did have one, uh, I mean, one notable uh, actor death, but not COVID-related. Uh, uh, Irfan Khan from uh, Life of Pi and Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, dead at 54, young. Yeah. Um, but not uh, not COVID related, uh, I, I guess. Thankfully, but uh, so we we did uh, lose him. But outside of that, there has not been a lot of other reported um, uh, actor or, uh, or you know uh, director deaths, anything high profile anyway that we know about. Right. Um, which is great news. It's always good to see the industry surviving. Although we do know that the industry itself, there are many uh, film productions that are on death's door. That's true. Um, many, many, many films being postponed. It looks like the summer movie season is probably not going to happen this year. Yeah. Uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, you know, uh, the big. This is typically when the big blockbusters are starting to roll out. We're in May, you know, and they're postponing all these. They postponed Black Widow. They postponed Wonder Woman 1984. Um, there's, uh, there's really not much on the horizon, uh, but maybe that'll change. Yeah. I mean, there was the news story about, I think, uh, it was AMC and, uh, Universal were fighting over because Universal was streaming a Trolls movie. Am I, do I have that right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the latest Trolls movie, uh, the title escapes me. Um, Trolls 2, Electric Boogaloo. Something like that. But yeah, they Universal essentially said, well, this worked out pretty well. So we're probably going to keep with this idea of releasing things to streaming right around the time when we were released into the theaters. And uh, AMC stepped up and said, what are you talking about? We're not going to book your movies anymore in our theaters. Now, it was a kind of a uh, tempest in the teapot, I think, because Universal immediately came back and said, "Hey, hey, hey, we, we're not, we're not saying we're not going to give some lead time to the theater releases, but we'll we'll figure it out." But I guess this is a point of contention between the movie studios and the movie theaters that has been ongoing about what is the window that you're allowed to 
keep the movie in the theater before it goes to the streaming service. Obviously, the movie theaters feel that this is an important thing to keep them in business, and the studios are just want to make sure that they maximize their profit on the film. Yeah. Are, are you saying that this is this is goes beyond Trolls Two? This is bigger. I, than Trolls 2? <laughs> hard to believe that anything could be bigger I, than Trolls Two. Can't believe that. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see where that plays out. I I do think that there's uh, something to it. I mean, the movie industry has been in the movie theater industry, I should say, has been in in, in trouble steadily for many years. Um, as as fewer and fewer people are showing up to see things in the theater. Uh, and more and more people are watching them on their devices, watching them at home on TV, streaming. And I, there's no way to put that genie back in the bottle anyway. So I, I feel like maybe it is something that's going to happen, that there's going to be more of this sort of simultaneous release, which a lot of smaller films do already, um, or at least shorter windows. But I do feel like there's a certain contingent of the population and there are certain styles of movies where there's always going to be a bigger allure to going to a movie theater to see them. Yeah. Uh, and it's also, I think, made a lot of the movie chains step up their game as far as like better, cleaner seats, uh, you know, recliners, food in the theater, more, making it more of an, of an experience than just going to sit in a room to watch a movie. And let's be honest, there were a lot of theaters where they hadn't replaced their seats in 30 years. You're sitting down and there's torn upholstery or, you know, a spring sticking in your butt <laughs> while you sit down. Right, yeah. I mean, as, as the home, you know, as, as the TVs have become bigger and, and the correct, you know, your, your picture has become better, your sound has become better. Some of those things that you used to go escape to the movies to experience, uh, you can get a lot of that at home. But I don't think there's any question that the movie going experience with a you know crowded theater that's really into the movie is still a valuable experience. I mean, I can very much so. think back at some of the best movie going experiences I've had in the theater, and it's there's just something that everyone laughing along or, you know, that, that kind of thing that just makes it better. I mean. Absolutely. It's, it, I think comedy movies in particular suffer from not having the movie going experience. Um, the audience experience, because obviously yeah. your big budget action visual effects movies, the bigger the screen, the bigger the sound system, the better the experience. Yeah, but, I mean, something yeah. about, uh, I mean, it's science, I think, that and there's a reason they play laugh tracks on comedy, right? right? It's an infectious situation um, that you experience when you hear other people laughing. I mean, I, I look back at when I saw National Lampoon's Vacation as a 13 or 14-year-old kid, my first R-rated movie, packed movie theater, everyone just laughing so hard at all those funny bits. I mean, it's probably my favorite movie going experience to this day, just of how fun that was. They close the road, they put up big signs like this one. Yeah. And um, it's different now. You're sitting in home watching a comedy. Uh, it's a little different. So I'm looking forward to one day when we can go back in there and do that all together. Yeah, me too. And I, I mean, they're talking already about when things do reopen, that they're going to have to do, you know, every other seat or every couple of seats or something like that. And um, I think it was, I think it might have been AMC also who said that their margins would support, oh no, it was Cinemark. Who said that their their margins would support thirty uh, percent? They it would be worth it to them to open up if they could do thirty percent capacity, which is pretty low. I was surprised at that number. Um, and was, so that would be like every four seats or something. Um, so not quite the same experience, but still communal, still something. And you know, we're human beings. We are communal creatures. We all uh, miss being around each other. And now that things are starting to, um, you know, we're starting to open up a little bit. Uh, knock on wood, not too early, but, you know, starting to get back into the world a little bit. And the weather has changed enough that we can start spending time outside, socially distanced together. We've talked about a possible episode outdoors where uh, yeah. you and I could sit a little bit apart with a wide angle lens and do this. 
be more fun for us. <laughs> well, I wonder if the, uh, if, you know, the drive-throughs will open up. There's still a handful of them out there that are. That's true. Uh, they have drive-in theaters. I didn't think about that. Those, that's a perfect thing that would actually work great for this situation, right? Right, for sure. All right, drive-in movie theaters, get on it. Reopen, it's time. Update your gear. <laughs> Fill the void. Come on, this is capitalism. There's a that demand. Is hilarious. That's hilarious. Any billionaires out there watching, I know we have a few in the audience. Um, I hope that you will take that to heart and reopen a giant drive in chain that we can all go to starting as soon as possible. That would be <laughs> there we go. And, uh, and that might be it for movie news for the week, I suppose. Yeah, I think we're a little light this week, and that's okay. I, I, I mean, I think we're probably going to. As we have talked about a couple of times, we've teased the Minnesota idea. We have some ideas coming. So that'll be, we're going to do probably some smaller bite-sized trickles of news as opposed to making these episodes longer. Because we do have uh, this one, and then we have another movie already in the can we got to do. And we're going to view another movie tomorrow night. So we're going to try and pump these out pretty quick. And we'll give you some little tidbits in between. So uh, without further ado, we want to bring out uh, one, of the, uh, one of the film league's rising stars, I would say. Uh, uh, Mr. Chris Waters, good friend of ours, and um, surprisingly uh, has not seen a lot of movies that you would think he would have seen. Let's, let's bring in another Chris. Let's bring him in now. All right, everybody. Moving on. This is Mr. Chris Waters. Take it away. <laughs> All right, we're joined by Chris Waters. Let's learn a little bit about Chris Waters before we get into his his picks. Hi, Chris. Well, well, hello. It's good to uh, good to be with you guys. Fantastic. And uh, this is, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. This is the first show that you had with three Chris's on it. Is that right? That is correct. So, so this automatically becomes, I think, the best show ever. I think that's probably true. We, I mean, we would have to agree with that, I think, right? Yeah, I think so. We had Chris Siebel on for a, for a Chris Pierre. Oh, that's right. So you're wrong. This is only the second best. But I was not in the shot with Chris Siebel, so this is the first time we've had three Chris's on screen, which is almost really too much for the audience to, to take. I mean, I hope they're all sitting down while they're watching. Mercy, I do believe I'm getting the vapors. We may be overloading the video signal. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, Chris. Where do you hail from? Uh, right now I'm in uh, Oak Park, Illinois, and um, that's about it. In the beer can room. With... You're in the virtual beer can room with me. I, oh, sorry. Yes, I'm in the virtual beer can room. All <laughs> together. That's right. Yes. I did not know the. Chris, in the film league, you sort of have the reputation, you, you make this joke quite a bit, that you don't have a deep uh, wellspring of movie knowledge and experience, but we're going to get to it anyway and okay. test you on it. You must have a favorite movie of all time, right? I, I certainly do, yes. Favorite movie of all time is uh, Star Wars. So I'm basically uh, right at the cutoff of being able to see it in the theater and remembering it. I was about, I was like around four when that came out. And I remember going to the theater continuously. Now, I don't know how often or how long it was actually in the theater. Let's say for, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, something like that, maybe. Like the first run back in 77, right? Yeah, I think so. Probably about, but for clarification, we're talking about A New Hope here, not Attack yes. of the Clones. Yes, yeah. the very first one, yes. I thought Jar Jar right. Biggs was, Let's clarify that. <laughs> Yeah, um, I so I want to say that I went to the theater, and now uh, it was you know a dollar or two to go to a show, but I went uh, around mid thirties times to the theater like that summer, uh, which again you know twelve weeks, eleven weeks, or whatever however long that's like two or three times a week that I was going. I mean that was how deep into that I was. Had all the toys, everything was. Um, uh, is just what I did. So, absolutely love it. Love it to this day. Uh, by far, uh, number one. Okay, that's a good pick. That's a fine pick uh, for your first film. What uh, would what what would you say was the uh, 
worst film you've ever seen in the theater? Worst film? Um, I don't know. Gosh, I'm not sure if I've seen a lot of bad films in the theater. Um, I think I remember seeing, uh, and this may uh, surprise some people, but uh, High Fidelity. Yeah. The theater, I, I, I was not a fan. I don't know why I was not a fan of it. Could have walked out. Have you seen it since, or is that I have not. I have not. Maybe it was just having an off day. I'm not sure. Huh? That's a surprise. That's surprising. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, then who were your top five breakups in your past with relationships? Isn't that the whole theme of that movie? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I disliked it. I don't yeah, know. Too many bad memories, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the trail of tears is long. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, that's good. Um, was Star Wars the first movie you saw when you were four years old? Is that. It, it had to have been. I mean, I don't remember anything prior to it. So it, I, that would probably be the first movie. I'm sure I went to the theater before, prior to that. I don't even know what it would have been, though. Um, but it could have been many films, even the, the year or two before that, before the summer of 77 when they came out. Yeah, I mean, after about, I don't know, 25, 26 showings, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how you can just keep going to the same movie. I guess when you're four, what are you going to do, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, mean, I, I, I have nothing else to do. I mean, it was like I was in quarantine, you know, I'm not going to school. Um, you know, you got you and your social distancing from your, around some kids on your block. But other than that, it's, that's really yeah. about I kind of feel like that movie only starts to make sense after 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> Very complicated. That's when you finally start to really understand what's going on. <laughs> well, Who is this talking dog? Down. I don't know. Don't learn. So, absolutely. Let, let's ask you this. Do you have a uh, favorite movie going experience not necessarily related to it being your first or your favorite but do you have anything that sticks out in your mind as an experience that was movie related um i i, I went to a movie uh in high school with uh, a girl i was uh dating <laughs> this is a family show family show uh, and and so uh, i'll stop i'll stop my story there <laughs> what movie was it I don't remember. Oh, okay. Okay, I think we see what happened there then. Yeah. <laughs> Are you making out during Schindler's List like Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> it might have been, yeah. No, all right. You have kind of, uh, you you know, you've had, you've made the jokes before that you haven't seen so many movies. I think recently you saw The Departed for the first time. I did, yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. movie. We think that you've seen The Godfather movies now, maybe. So yeah, so actually, now that you mention that, so maybe we should do we should do a, a, a mini segment here. Maybe we roll this into uh, the larger OPMFL um, when we get together for things. Like you guys, should name a movie that you are a hundred percent sure that I've seen, but and I will tell you if I've seen it or not. Right, and and I'm guessing overall most of the the films that people throw out there, I will have uh, a below fifty percent ratio. On. So this is the, this is. What do you think the odds are that Chris Waters has seen this movie? No, you say you say, hey, I'm sure you've seen this, and then I will tell you yes or no. I All see. right, I think we should do a round of that right now. You want to okay, start? we can try it. All right. All right, Chris Neville, you want to go? You want to throw one out there? That you're sure you're like, this guy has got to have seen this movie. Come on. Okay. Um, I will say you've seen The Sons of Katie Elder. <laughs> That's <laughs> actually it was either that it was either that or Star Wars. So, it was kind of balancing out here. Well, have you seen The Matrix? I have seen The Matrix. Good yeah. one. Good so one. Got okay. One. Uh, have you seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Actually, I've seen that too. Yes. There you go, oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, I, that, I, that must have been in the theater as well. And that was that was early on too. That was probably right around the same time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apollo thirteen. I've seen that. Yes. <laughs> uh, True Grit. I have not seen True Grit. Okay. All right. 
So we got four in. That's not bad. Empire Strikes Back. Better than what I thought. <laughs> four guesses before you know you find one that I uh, have seen. All right. So I think we uh, we have a new bit then. It has Chris? We'll ask every guest name a name, <laughs> name a movie that you think Chris Waters has seen, and then we'll have Chris's <laughs> response. <laughs> For, I'll be a re reoccurring character on this. I like. It. <laughs> Well, now that we have three Chris's together, I think it's time to move to Chris Picks. Here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Chris Waters in the hopper. Yes. Well, we know you've only seen eight movies, so it's going to be one of those. But yeah. what movie are you going to pick for us this time? So I'm going to go, not necessarily a movie, but uh, something in the, the genre that it's been on a screen at some point. So let me give a, a little quick background. Um, every Easter, growing up, I would watch uh, the Ten Commandments. You know, the original one, it was on the, the Saturday before Easter. Um, uh, Charlton Heston, Eo Brenner, all the classics, you know. And the, the, yeah, yes, the, the, the biggest movie or scene in that movie is where you know, he parts the Red Sea, right? But that's not my favorite. My favorite is uh, near the end when he comes down from uh, the mountain and he's got the Ten Commandments with him, right? And he looks down and there's all this partying, all this revelry that's happening with the crowd. It's like, it's like a Manapalooza almost that's going on. And he's, you know, he's looking at everybody and he separates who's with God and who's not with God and crowd split. He points at them and he's like, that's just something like, uh, those who will not live by the law. And then everybody starts scattering around like, shall will die by the law and he throws it. Those who will not live by the law <laughs> shall die by the law. know a couple things happen when you combine uh, like stone tablets and a gold idol it, it creates an explosion <laughs> I missed that in science class uh, growing up but um, you know it was a huge explosion and everything uh, Edward G Robinson you know he always gets it at, at the end you know he was one of them that went uh, up in flames so here's your Moses now see <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Lord, I shall give these laws unto thy people. Hear me! Oh, hear me! All pay heed! The Lord, the Lord Jehovah, has given unto you these fifteen... Oi. Ten! Ten commandments for all to obey! Um, so... Uh, so they had that on this year, but they had it on a week before Easter, which I got a chance to see, but that freed up sort of the Easter weekend for viewing. So the, the, the Chris Fix that I have is um, is Jesus Christ Superstar, which oh, was, okay. it was an NBC uh, like live theater special that they had on um, with uh, John Legend as the star and uh, chris neville i think you know, you're a, a fan i think of uh john legend and i am a big fan yeah. a, a couple weeks ago i think on your um uh your show that you do on thursday nights that we should plug uh you did a, a john legend song i want to say right? i did i did all of them yeah. so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which is fantastic so um he did and i it's a modern version if anybody doesn't know it and i didn't really know the story very well uh, oh, but jesus <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of this Jesus guy, but they did a whole musical about it. <laughs> so, spoiler alert, it doesn't end well for him. Okay. You know. But uh, the, the theatrical performance there uh, is it's a modern day telling uh, sort of it, uh, of what happens leading you know, with the passion and leading up to the crucifixion. So, uh, but just a wonderful. Uh, collection of talent that they have in that, you know, again, starting with John Legend, uh, just phenomenal. I mean, his range in his singing is just incredible. So Legend was Pontius Pilate. That's really the star of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm, not kidding. I'm not kidding. That's the, he's got the best song. I know because I played him in, in high school. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, there you go. We may we may have to hear a little. I did, uh, I did, oh, I'm sorry, I did Judas, not Bunny, but I'm talking about Judas. I did Judas and uh, Jesus Christ Superstar and Jesus and Godspell in the same year. Mm. That's when I gave up Christianity altogether. <laughs> yeah, that was too, too much, right? <laughs> I'm too close to it. I, got I felt like I got the, I got the idea. Okay, moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that, but that would be my, uh, Chris pick, is it to go see it, uh, live, I think, in a person that would be preferred. But if you can't do that, I would say, you know, try to find that um, that production. That was, a, it was done, I think, a couple of years ago, perhaps because it was a live audience that they had. Uh, but just just over the top, just really well done from uh, start to finish. Good stuff. Uh, Chris May, you got a pick? Uh, yeah, I got a Netflix pick, and it's a, it sort of dovetails to Waters' pick here a little bit. It's about, uh, it's, it's a Netflix movie called... I guess it was released in uh, maybe a year or two ago called it's called bathtubs over Broadway and it's a very weird movie kind of but here here's the here's the idea this guy named Steve Young not the quarterback a comedy writer for David Letterman used to be in charge of finding David Letterman's wacky records remember there was Dave's record collection was a bit so this guy, Steve Young, started collecting musicals that were produced for American corporations, like for sales conventions in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And it's this whole underworld of musical productions for Goodyear tires, spark plugs, American standard fixtures, written by like top-notch uh, Broadway people, starring people like Tony Randall, uh, Florence Henderson. It's this whole, and so what this guy did is, now I, I kind of identified with the movie, not that I'm into musical theater very much, but I'm a collector, as you guys know. And so this guy was an avid, crazy record collector of just this genre. And there was other guys across the country, no matter how weird your collecting tastes are, there's always some other son of a gun trying to get what you want and that's part of this but then the guy goes and actually interviews people that were in these things and it was a way that people made a lot of money and these companies general electric spent three million dollars in like the 60s on one general electric produced musical for their salesmen and people made a live and it, it, it's just a really fascinating interesting movie about something that was completely forgotten to history and the steve young guy actually wrote a book about it and so it's worth a watch watch it with my daughter and wife and they they enjoyed it a lot so uh, that sounds like fun bathtubs over broadway bathtubs over broadway yep. yeah i'll watch that for sure and i will say um i have uh I, I mean i still do a fair amount of those kind of uh corporate spots where you write music for their sales events and that kind of thing they still but, that happens well, this is right up your alley then because this yeah. is this is this would be enjoyable to watch okay i love it all right so uh i uh, i i as usual have two in mind i can't pick which one i want do we want something kind of scary or want something kind of uh fun and uplifting does it does it have a broadway theme to it neither of them is a broadway theme neither of them. i could have gone that way but i'm not going to because you know for our viewers who don't really want that we got to give them something we might have to go fun and uplifting in this. Yeah. Fun and uplifting, then I'm going to go with what I still contend is the most perfectly made Western ever made. And that is Silverado, uh, the Lawrence Kasdan made uh, Western from the 80s, starring, uh, let's see, Kevin Klein, Kevin Costner, Danny Glover, Scott Glenn, Jeff Goldblum, Linda Hunt, Rosanna Arquette, Ryan Dennehy, uh, oh my God, so many. I, and, and but the the main four are are uh, Scott Glenn, Kevin Klein, Kevin Costner, and Danny Glover are like the four heroes. And I actually wrote a paper about this in college about how why this was the most perfectly made western ever because there is a character in there that perfectly encapsulates all of the western tropes. Jeff Goldblum is the as the kind of slippery, sleazy gambler character. Brian Dennehy is the evil sheriff. 
uh, I mean, everybody in there is a caricature of the of the trope, but it comes together so beautifully. It's a it's really a great looking movie. Lawrence Kasdan does a great job directing, and cinematography is very like John Ford, huge big Western vistas all the time. The acting is great. Um, there's some comedy to it. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's you know homesteaders versus ranchers, the usual thing. But I just really I can't speak highly enough about it. the music's great. The score is fantastic. It's really uh, if you like a western, this is a really entertaining one. And because there's in addition to all of the usual, you know, uh, you know, afraid to walk my own land kind of stuff. There's uh, which is a quote from the movie. There's um, there's also a decent amount of comedy. Kevin Costner's character is very funny as kind of the wackier younger brother. Um, and uh, I just, I really I enjoy that. That's that's something I can rewatch over and over again and really enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're looking for a good sort of uh, if you love westerns or if you're just looking for a good kind of family movie, I highly recommend Silverado. It's a, it's a really good good flick. Have you seen it, Chris May? Yeah, I've seen it uh years ago it, it, it makes me want to rewatch it just listening to that cast i forgot all those people oh, i mean it is it is bonkers how many great actors are in that movie yeah ridiculous <laughs> so yeah that's definitely a good one yeah. no, no surprise i think to the uh, to you guys i have not seen it uh but when it comes to broadway it'll be right on the list <laughs> <laughs> silverado the musical <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah <laughs> Well, I uh, so those are Chris picks. I think that was a good a good round there. That was good stuff. Okay, moving on. This uh, this this episode, we have a pick from uh, our very own Chris Waters. How fortunate that he was already here in studio. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right, Chris Waters, you picked, uh, uh, I thought, a very interesting pick, and, uh, and none of us had seen it except you. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. All right. So the, the movie is called What Happened to Monday? And um, I should back up. So again, as we touched on, I think, in this um, show a little bit earlier, my knowledge in watching movies is much lower than everybody else's, right? So in coming up with a movie or a, a list that I could pick from, um, there's no way that I was gonna find something that I had seen, but no one else in the league had seen. Like that just wasn't gonna happen. So I had a, a nice list and most people had seen different things from it. Um, but then this was the first one that we all saw together um, after we had been, um, the stay at home orders had come into play. So we were somewhat limited to Netflix. And I think Chris Neville, you found the Netflix party sort of so that we could all watch the movie at the same time. And there's a little chat feature right in the right hand corner. Uh, so that worked out really well. But um, that meant that the movies that I had picked, actually none of them were on Netflix, which makes me maybe have to rethink that list uh, entirely. But, um, so I had to pivot and go with something off of Netflix. And we, as a, as a family, we had been showing some uh, movies uh, to the kids. So we had recently seen stuff like Oh, Ace Ventura and uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles and things like that. And my oldest uh, just wasn't enamored with all of the picks that we had been putting out there. So she says, hey, uh, let's, um, let me pick the movie for, for the family movie night coming up. And then we say, okay, well, what is it? It's, it's, it's what happened to Monday. And so we said, well, is it appropriate for everybody? She said, yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's no problem. Like five minutes in. And then she says, oh, wait, it may not be all that appropriate for uh, Gwen, the, the youngest. So we may have to fast forward through parts or cover her eyes or whatever. So other than the fact that it was a, a of the violence, um, uh, language, and uh, brief nudity it was a fantastic family movie to get everybody together. But um, I don't want to give away too much here, but the, the premise is that it was, I don't know, 50 or 70 years in the future, and it's a, it's a grim, it's a bit of a dark, gritty uh, world. 
there's been many um, catastrophes that have happened, um, starvation, uh, overcrowding, population, um, environmental issues. So basically the government, which I, I think um, is a bit more like a, a Orwell's 1984, a bit a Big Brother-ish, uh, is, is um, sort of ruling the day. And you can only have one child, okay? If there's any more, they sort of take them and, and take them away. Um, and so there is a, there's a, the start of the movie, there's a, a lady who has seven identical girls. Yeah, seven tuppers, like you do. Yeah, <laughs> as, as usual, right? <laughs> and so the, the mother dies, you don't even see her ever. She dies during, I think, childbirth. And then the grandfather, played by William Defoe, who I, I really like, really like almost everything he does, um, takes over and will raise these girls, but sort of in, in secret. Um, and he names them each a day of the week. Monday is Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, so on and so forth. And uh, as he's raising them, uh, he institutes a policy that you can only go outside their, their house or their apartment on your day of the week. So if you're Wednesday, that's your day to go out, and then you've got to come back and stay in the other six days, and then the next girl sort of takes her turns. But they all assume the same identity, the same name. I think it, I think it's Karen in the movie. Um, as they go out, they all have the same job, know the same people, and sort of come back and report back. Well, what happens is Monday, who's the, the oldest of the group, she goes missing. She doesn't come back. And so then there's all kinds of uh, uh, shenanigans, 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 uh, drama and suspense of what happens, and they need to try to find her, and they can't find her, and other people go disappearing, and the government gets involved, and all that. So I I'll kind of stop there uh, for anyone who may want to see it and, and finish it off. But it's uh, it's a bit more of a suspenseful movie. It certainly draws from I think a lot of other movies that. Um, uh, that are popular um, genres in different ways, but um, so it's there's some originality to it, but it's certainly borrowing some um, some major themes from some other films. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it was I think it's interesting that we've been picking so many dystopian future films, um, but uh, yeah, it was I had never heard of this movie before, and it was uh, it was interesting it was uh, definitely a different spin on that genre which i which i think at this point you can say is a genre there's so many of them you know this, this dystopian future movie is kind of a thing um i remember it was just mad max but <laughs> but uh yeah it was an interesting movie well well acted uh defoe is really good in it but I, i'm with that i think he's always Glenn Close in the movie also. She was uh, she was good and usually as she was you know kind of chilling and uh, and um, scary. <laughs> I mean William Defoe and Glenn Close weren't in it a lot. I mean I think they got paid their you know salaries to be in the movie and put their name up to be associated with it, but it's not like they were in it for most of the movie. I mean, they they were probably shooting each for a week or two at the most. I would say. Yeah, this was this was Numi Rapace's movie. She is the uh, woman who plays uh, the Seven Sisters, um, mm -hmm. and uh, not bad. It's it's not always an easy thing to do that. Um, you know, I, I there's a show called Orphan Black. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Uh, it's a BBC show that I really have enjoyed. Uh, it's over with now, but it ran for several seasons, and there was a uh, a girl in there who played a ton of clones, uh, and that was very effective. We were talking earlier before I started filming about other movies where one actor plays a bunch of parts. We I mentioned the Pink Panther movies, of course. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, seven, you know, to, you know, I. I I don't even think you could calculate the odds of it of there being seven I identical uh, births, right? I mean, it's that's the one egg dividing seven times miraculous. I, I don't, I doubt it's ever happened. I, maybe in the future this is going to happen, but um, 
Well, there was the Octomom, right? I mean. Yeah, they weren't identical, though. That was true. <laughs> I mean, that, that's. <laughs> I mean, they had to be identical so they could all play the same uh, by one actress. It, to me, the 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 actress playing Seven. Part of it, um, there there was that video for Alanis Morissette played Ironic, where she played herself. She put on a hat, like, oh, she's a different person. It had a little bit of that to it, where, like, <laughs> oh, this one's blonde now. Okay, you know, whatever. Oh, the one with glasses. Oh, that's a different one. That's Thursday, right? <laughs> so, I don't know. Part of me couldn't get past that. Um, and the other thing that I couldn't get past in some ways was when the pressure got, you know, where, the, where they're closing in on these seven uh, sisters, you know, because they're doing bad stuff, you know, they'd send in an army of guys to get them and then they fend it off all you know <laughs> not all the time but I won't give it away but you know it's kind of what I mean that's an old you know that, that's in a lot of movies right where it's like in, in, I, I haven't even ever seen any of these uh, Fast and Furious movies I've not seen one of them but when Vin Diesel drives a car out of an airplane it, it just seems like he's not gonna make it it seems it seems <laughs> ill-advised <laughs> or through a skyscraper, whatever they're doing. Some of it felt like that, like, how are they going to get out of this one? And well, I mean, famously, st that's a Star Wars callback, because famously, stormtroopers cannot shoot anybody. <laughs> yeah, right, they just keep <laughs> Very bad name. It's the helmets. It's hard to see in those helmets. They fog up very easily. <laughs> they, should, they really should have redesigned the helmets. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It really probably isn't my like genre of movies that you know that that type of oh that's a good kill and that kind of movie. I don't really. That's not my type of movie. I don't I don't really seek those out. But I I mean, I was entertained I guess by the movie. All you know and just having to get over the fact that there were seven identical twins or not twins. That's it, seven identical women that. Uh, all had to keep their story straight every day, right? They had to come home and, hey, what'd you do today? And Because they had to keep seeing the same people. And and we should mention that, that, that there were a lot of checkpoints that they go through that would, uh, that would, that would challenge that. So they really did have, that was a big source of tension in the movie is they all had to make sure they understood exactly what was going on with each other. Yeah. Um, and that eventually leads to some of the, the conflict in the movie. So, uh, it, it, I mean, you know, it, it was, like I said, it was a different take on it, but, uh, I, I see what you're saying. I, I think that there are there definitely were some uh, some over the top uh, elements to it. I mean, you can see why this isn't a movie that uh, was at the top ten list of uh, a lot of critics. I don't remember Leonard Maltin talking about this one much, but um, probably not. Although Chris Neville, I think you you found um, doing some quick research. Wasn't this on a on a, on a list or something like that of a foreign? list of movies that didn't get made or, or something like that oh yeah this was on the blacklist uh for a while so the blacklist is this um every year there's a list called the blacklist which are these supposedly great scripts that do not get made every year in hollywood there was a podcast for a while on where they would reenact these films which if you can find it it ended a few years ago but if you can find those old reads they're pretty interesting and and pretty good and this was on the blacklist but then eventually did get made uh, not in Hollywood. This was shot entirely in Romania. The whole movie, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, and I mean, you can see the interest level in it. Uh, and you know, it would have been a different movie if this was Scarlett Johansson or something like that. You know, it, it, you can see where this had the potential to be like a blockbuster. If this was J.J. Abrams directing and you know uh, and Gal Gadot starring, this would have been a different movie. You know. Um, I probably even more over the top. <laughs> right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, they would. They would have nine days of the week. Something yeah, like exactly. That. Exactly. The mysterious eighth day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, overall, I, I mean, an interesting pick, and it was. It, you know, I got to tell you, at this point, it's nice to watch anything that I haven't heard of and seen. It's you know, it's. This is a conversation I feel like everybody in the world has all the time. Like, what have you been watching? Um, because we're all watching. There's, you know, uh, at least the weather's starting to turn, so now we'll be able to go outside for all. But at the end of the day, you're sitting in front of that TV <laughs> or your device or whatever. 
Um, so, with that in mind, shall we go to our uh, shall we go to our uh, our ratings? Yeah, we'll go to the ratings. I just want to say though, too, it was fun watching the movie. You know, it, together through that Netflix party where we could all kind of chime in, and and we we watched another one since then. So I, I think in, until we can all get in the same room, I think that that was a pretty fun thing to do. So. Yeah, I'll, I think we should give a plug to Netflix party. It it is a Chrome only extension, so you have to use the Chrome browser, and it's not for mobile devices, so you have to be on a computer. But it is uh, it is pretty good and pretty effective. We did have one experience where it was kind of tough, but it was sort of a peak time when everybody was watching. So uh, just like a Zoom chat, you know, if uh, if everybody's on at the same time, it does, it can't cause problems. Yeah. Um, I will say I I did a little research and I found a couple alternatives to Netflix Party. Uh, the, for the crowd out there, we've done a couple of these. We're going to have another beer can room episode coming out probably pretty quickly on the heels of this one. Because we're already, Dan Coulter's movie's already been screened, and tomorrow we're screening Scott Garbosi's movie. So we are, we're moving. The, the, the OPMFL does not get stopped by quarantine. Oh. But I did, find to... one, I did find one called 2-7, which uh, I'm going to do a little research on tonight and see if it works, because if we do that one, we can also do uh, Amazon Prime or Hulu or Disney+. Plus. So it opens up our options. And I think it even says that you should be able to do virtually any streaming service that everybody has a membership to it should work with. If that's the case, that opens up a lot of options. Well, I'm watching uh, CBS is running Raiders of the Lost Ark tonight with commercials. That'll be fun. That's the only way to watch it. The only way to watch it. It's four hours long. The only thing that would be better is if it was the uh, the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's rate this one. Uh, Chris Waters, what are you going to rate this on our, scale, our patented scale? Give, give me the scale. patented scale again. So the patented scale is, I gotta go this way, uh, light beer, lager, IPA, porter. Those okay. are the those are the four things. I was thinking about this, Chris May, by the way, that we, we probably need to rethink our, our rating system. Once we get through Grabosis movie, but once around the horn, we might want to change that something a little more easier to understand. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So light beer, lager, IPA, and porter. Yes. And if you need to go in between, we have in between degrees that we can talk about. Okay. All right. There's a okay. Um, all right. So I, I would say if you're able to suspend reality quite a bit just looking for something to watch in the background like again maybe you've never seen before that may fit to a more of an ipa if you're looking more um i, I think just think on the the quality of movies i would probably go this one more as a, a lager um uh just with everything some of the some of the holes in the plot that you do see again entertaining but um you, you, again, you've got to suspend reality a little bit. Uh, if you're talking about a family, a good wholesome family movie, I'm going uh, a light beer. <laughs> um, it depends on you know you and your watching uh, audience that you're sitting. But your, but your rating is what lager, or are you going uh, your personal rating? Regardless my, my of personal yeah. rating is I will go I will go lager on this one. All right, I think I will um echo that uh but i'll go I'll go a little higher than lager because i thought that at least the production value was pretty high and uh and there were some entertaining elements to the movie i i feel like maybe it's not quite an ipa though so i think i'm gonna go between lager and ipa which would be uh let's say that's an amber ale i'm gonna go with an amber ale so I'm going to go between an amber ale and a lager. What's that? No, I'm just okay, so that's, pro that's probably a, uh, is that a summer ale? Is that a? I think it's a Killian's Red. Do you remember that beer? I want to give it the old Killian's Red rating. I like it. I like it. All right, so we have our, we have our reviews. We have our uh, ratings. So uh, what happened to Monday? Check it out. Uh, it, uh, it's worth, it's worth a view. Uh, I mean, if you got a bunch of really great stuff to watch in front of it, watch that first. But this is good to watch. <laughs> <laughs> this is good to watch when you get to it. We did enjoy it. And uh, try Netflix Party or maybe this 2-7, some other, uh, there, there, there are some other options out there because I think that's going to be the way things are for a little while. It looks like it's um, going to be a while before we're back in the theater. Again. So there you go. All right. Thank you, Chris Waters. Thank yeah, you. thanks for having me on, boys. Always good to talk with you.
You know, you're an entertaining guy. I don't care what everybody says. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah, everybody's Chris May. So. That's right. All right. Thank you, Chris. All right. All right. That was great. Chris Waters. Uh, you know, now we're back to the normal two Chris's here. That was, that was a lot to take three Chris's, but a lot of energy. Room was uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, that pretty much wraps up today's show. I'd say, uh, yes. yes. Um, I will, you know, I did notice, uh, that is our, that is our lowest rated movie to date on the, uh, reviews and the room. No reflection on Chris Waters because it was entertaining. And uh, and it was something we hadn't seen, but I just thought it worth a mention. That was yeah, yeah. and it was his uh, you know teenage daughter's pick, really. I mean, that's he, true. That's yeah. true. No offense. <laughs> um, so uh, next week or next, I, well, next week we'll put this together. But let's say the next episode we're going to feature uh, Dan Culture. He's next up. Um, we have already viewed his movie as we've a, watched his movie. Uh, yeah, this, but we're not gonna tell you what that is just yet or should we should we tease that and tell them what it is nah okay we'll, fine we'll make... um we will say that dan cultura uh in a fit of creativity um did a parody song about this movie um but it does give away some of the plot points so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh on dan's episode next uh, episode we'll we'll have that song recorded and performed for you uh, and oh, you're going to perform it. Well, I don't know if to perform Maybe Dan will <laughs> But we're going to have that song to you in some in some way. It's about what happened to Monday. And I think you should watch the movie in the meantime, just so you can understand the song. Um, and until then, uh, I guess happy viewing. And, and we're going to uh, walk, go walk around outside, socially distant, and try and, you know, enjoy what we can of our lives until things are back to normalcy. Yep. All right. So thanks for joining us on another Reviews, reviews from the Beer Can, can Room. room. <laughs> All right. All <laughs> you right. Know, we're getting it. We're getting it. Let's get things done. What we got? Good night, everybody. Good stuff. Cha, cha, cha.